Soccer, or football as it's widely known, may not be the first sport that comes to mind for Canadians. But it has quietly grown across the country, evolving into an adaptive sport for blind and partially sighted players. Five-a-side soccer has the players donning eye shades and using a ball with noisemakers like bells inside. These adaptations have allowed countless athletes to play the most popular sport in the world. Hilary Scanlon is one of those players. First time I started playing soccer was when I was four. Like a lot of Canadians, I grew up playing Timbit soccer. That was my introduction to, I guess, falling in love with soccer and football. I've always loved the social aspect and component of it, but I've also really enjoyed the competitive nature of it as well. It's one of the few sports that has a ball that I could see growing up. But as she got older, her vision got worse. Eventually, she received her CNIB ID card and started to seek out opportunities to continue to play the game she loved. I think it was that week that I researched blind soccer to see if it was the thing, to see if it was available at all in Canada. And I found Matt Greenwood's name through, I think, like a pile of websites. And I was thrilled, so I contacted him. Nothing was really going on at the time, but I could tell he was really committed to get it going. That connection with Matt Greenwood started Hillary down the path she finds herself on now as a top female player in the country. Matt remembers when Hillary first reached out. She was a high school girl out of Peterborough that was playing competitive soccer, that knew she, she was losing her eyesight, that it was deteriorating and wanted to know what to do next. Um, and I told her that at that stage there wasn't anything, but she should still keep pushing her local club to make sure that they provide her with an opportunity to, to train and, and to play if possible. Uh, and we revisited each other probably about two or three years ago. She popped up, she was just graduating from university and, and looking to go and do a master's and had seen that we'd started a program at Pickering. So her mum would bring her down every Saturday morning for training for an hour. That Pickering club was part of a years long journey Matt had been undertaking. His dream was to create a blind soccer program in Canada. And that team was a very early milestone. But that development, that system development is, is really what I love, that opportunity to, to assess who's missing out on this, this game. Uh, and it's really one of those games that's so affordable and for the most part barrier free. Uh, so it's, it's really about making uh, grassroots coaches or even leaders at the provincial and the national level know that we can do this, that it's an accessible sport. We just need a little bit more education and awareness and we can start to attract players and, and coaches and team officials. There was a mixture of emotions for Hillary as she reconnected with a sport she had always loved, whether it's on the pitch or in a gym. It was so exciting <laughs> just to get back on the pitch. The biggest challenge for me is, and it still is, is just keeping the ball, keeping track of the ball. And that's kind of how it feels playing soccer, like a little tap and you lose the ball forever, it feels like. Hillary's mom remembers being uneasy when her daughter first started playing five-a-side. Playing was very scary for me because I was always worried about things like getting injured, competing against people maybe she didn't know and worrying about dynamics, you know, just typical parent stuff. And she laid all those fears to rest. There is some reason to be concerned about safety. While it is a non-contact sport, Collisions can and do happen. Oh. You hit me in my face. It's one of the highest, if not the highest, um, risk of concussions in the, in the Paralympic Games. So uh, in Germany now, all of the players in their national league have to wear a compression headband as well as eye shades. Uh, and we've just invested in some of those for all of our players. So our players will be a lot safer and moving forward, we'll probably make it mandatory so that the players have that peace of mind when it comes to uh, yeah, head injuries. But yeah, it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. The growth of the sport comes from raising awareness and uncovering hidden talent and potential in new players. Players like Fatlam El Shani, who discovered the sport during his time at W. Ross McDonald's School for the Blind in Brantford, Ontario. I asked one of the teachers that was helping us, I said, how, can, how are we gonna do soccer? He said, there's blind, there's blind soccer. I said, wait, what? He said, yeah, there is a blind soccer. And I said, how does that work? And he said, just like, you know, I will show you. And 
he, he passed me the ball and I heard that like, you know, the ball has a bell in it and uh, I heard it. And I was so happy that I was able like to play again. Soccer was my dream, soccer was my everything. And I was really happy like, there's no words that I can explain how I felt at that time. He was a, like a cheeky punk kind of kid who had all the skill in the world, um, but he had a bit of frustration as well. He played competitively as a, as a kid back home um, and unfortunately lost his, lost his eyesight and was now trying to work his way through being a talented soccer player. But how does that look and feel with, without sight? So he's still very dominant on the field. His, his dribbling skills are fantastic and he has a fantastic rocket of a, a shot. Um, now we're working with him to sort of bring in the other players on the field and, and I think at the moment he feels like he has to be the most dominant and kind of run the show, but we'll get to a point where he's got supporting players around him. Hearing Matt's praise of Fatlam, I had to get a first-hand look at his skills on the pitch. I caught up with him at the Ontario Parasport Games and I kept hearing an unfamiliar term during the game. Boy. So I asked him to explain. You're saying something when you're playing defense. So I'm coming up, I'm playing defense on you. What am I supposed to say? You have to say boy. Boy? That, yeah. And what's that mean? That's like, to let them know where you are and you don't run into each other. Okay, because the ball makes noise so you know where the ball is. So yeah. boy is kind of you being the ball, kind of saying, I'm here, yeah. I'm here. For me, I don't use guides. I, like, I just, in the beginning of the match, I just like asked my goalie where he is. I wanted to know where my net is, where the middle of the pitch is and where the other net is. And then after that, it's all like always in my mind, you know, like I have to know where I am because right. I don't pay attention to guides or anything. And what about if, if for the players that do use a guide, what kind of information are they looking for from the guide? What do they to need let, to know? They, to let the, like, the guide need to let them know where they are. Let's say like I'm at, like in the middle of the pitch. I want my coach to tell me, says you're in the middle of the pitch or like go more to the right or more to the left. Once I understood that, I couldn't pass on the opportunity to face a penalty shot from Fatlam. If I go in the net right now and say center, center, can you put last one by me? I'll try. Okay. So I took my position in goal and he lined up his shot. Okay. Middle, 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 middle. Right here, right in the middle, right here. <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> so you just went high there? If you were like just a few inches lower, you would have pegged me right in the head. But what's cool? I don't want that. No, but that's amazing because all I was saying is middle and you put it right over my head. So that's all the information you need. Yeah. Leading the development of Canada's best blind soccer players is huge for Matt. But while this game is growing, the pace of that growth can be frustrating. Almost done. So very quickly, for three or four minutes, we're gonna practice some penalty kicks. So it's a, uh, a, a fresh-eyed lad landing here in 2006 from the UK, coming from what I saw in the development there. Um, it just seemed like a no-brainer, and I just figured it would take three or four years and we would be up to speed, and that just hasn't happened. Definitely frustrating, but I guess it's sort of a reality check that you just can't wait around for somebody else to, to do this for you. You need to put a stake in the ground and get started yourself. Frustrations aside, he has two strong leaders in Hillary and Fatlam to help guide his national teams. The goal is reaching the LA Paralympic Games in 2028, where he hopes the men and women's side will be represented. There hasn't been a women's competition yet, but Matt has already named Hillary team captain as the push for inclusion continues. This is never something that I imagined happening in a million years. I've never let myself imagine or dream of playing for Team Canada in any capacity. So for this to happen for my favorite sport, the one that I love the most is just unfathomable. <laughs> I mean, she just oozes leadership when she's around the field on it or, or off it, and the players gravitate towards that and hearing from another player, not from the coach, you know, telling them what to do and providing that guidance, which is fantastic because there's only so much you can do from the side as the coach to communicate. You need you need leadership on the field to, to be able to take them forward. Hansi, where are you? Ah! The establishment of the men's national team is something Fatlam has been Boy. eagerly waiting for. Boy. He never stops, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't stop until we had the national team, you know what I mean? Like, I was asking him almost every week, any news, Matt, any news, Matt? No, I'm still working on it, still working on it, you know? So, like, now that we have a national team, he's very excited for us. Eli? The foundation Matt has laid in Canada has allowed this beautiful game to grow. Gavin, Yomi. Come over here. Come on. 
Come to me, come to me, quick, quick. As he continues to work hard and establish the program, he sees a bright future ahead. To be able to see a national team um, in LA in 2028 would be phenomenal. Just the thought of being able to have a team at an event like that would be incredible. Uh, and knowing now that we've we've started that groundwork, we've got players like Hillary and, and Fatlam in the system. We're developing, we're attracting new players every every month, every every week. Uh, would be be huge, immense sense of pride to be able to see a team out there representing Canada, knowing how hard they've worked, not so much me, knowing how hard they've worked to get to that point, because I know they're desperate for that opportunity and I'm going to try and do everything I can to, to empower them to, to get there.